Thank you so much. Thank you very much for coming today. We at Mitsukoshi restaurants are very honored to have you today as our guest. Where we can share the belief of Japanese hospitality. This takumi translates into artisan in English. The Japanese artisan can celebrate their craft using natural world around them. And here we have focused on five elements that shape Japanese life. From the left, that's wood, paper, stone, water, and earth. And today you have been selected to dine in our paper room, the second one. Paper has been a part of Japanese living for many generations. We call Japanese paper washi, and the use of washi is seen everywhere. In the use of Japanese calligraphy, folded out of origami, and also culture of gift wrapping called musubi. And musubi means to tie or connect, which is a symbol of our message to connect our guests to Japan's nature and art. Tonight we are dining in Epcot and this is a restaurant that actually just opened up on July 16th of 2019 and we are super excited. This is a new Japanese restaurant. It is Taikumi Te. What this restaurant actually does is celebrates perfection in nature through Japanese art and the word Takumi actually translates to artisan in English. And there's five different rooms here. There is washi paper, wood, stone, earth, and water. And we are really excited to dine here. This is actually a signature restaurant here in Japan. I think it is going to be a great new addition. Even though it's been open for a couple months, this is our first time trying it. So I'm really excited. The menu looks amazing. And we are ready to start eating. So for my meal and we're actually here with our friends Don and Elliot, and the three of us actually got the tasting menu, which is $130 a person, and it's seven courses. And our first course just arrived, and it is the Atoshi, which is a Wagyu meatball that's actually deep fried, and then it has a citrus teriyaki on it. It smells amazing. And Josh did not get the tasting menu, however, complimentary of the chef, they did bring him out his own Atoshi. And this Atoshi is actually their like version of an amuse bouche. I think I might have just died inside a little bit. I, was, I think Elliot's crying. <laughs> Holy. That was amazing. I could eat a whole plate of those. That was literally the perfect bite. The meatball is so warm and so tender and the deep fry on the outside. I think it's like a tempura on it and it's really light, but it's got a nice tiny little bit of crunch to it. But then that citrus teriyaki was amazing. That was literally like the perfect bite. So amazing. And I know Elliot wants to talk about it real quick. He's like dying on the inside right now. <laughs> I'm trying to compose myself because this is a really nice place, but like, I'm exploding on the inside. <laughs> 
smells like a dumpling. It's better. Yep. <laughs> that is really, really amazing. The Wagyu be meatball inside is super tender. It's very light. And then you get this nice uh, crunch element from basically like the dumpling around the outside because it's deep fried and it is so great. And then you have that little bit of the citrus in there that makes it kind of pop almost. That was good. <laughs> While we're talking about me, I did not do the sampling. Uh, I chose to get two different things that are very uh, more authentic to the restaurant and to the Japanese like food and culture. So that's me trying to be different. So I have also chosen to get a drink here. And the reason that I got this drink is because it sounded like a mojito basically. Uh, it is Yoto Yuzu Citrus Sake, rum, fresh mint, yuzu juice, and orange. It is set up and prepared almost like a mojito. The mint in there makes it smell like a mojito. I mean, it's made with rum. It's good. It's very light. It doesn't really taste like a mojito at all. It tastes like a... It almost tastes just like orange juice, which is interesting, but I really like it. It's light, it's refreshing. There are some subtle kind of mojito flavors in there, but overall, I mean, like, it's literally like orange juice, except look, at it's not like super dark. So it's actually really good. I'll probably drink this very, very quickly. Our second course has arrived and it is sushi. We first have the salmon. Then we have a toro, which is like a fatty tuna. Then we have a regular tuna. Then there's an uni, which is sea urchin. And then we have a yellowtail with a roe on top. Then there are two sauces that come with it. One is a leek puree and the other is another kind of puree, which actually has wasabi in it. And it's actually not spicy though. It's just kind of infused with these wasabi flavor. So. We're really excited to try this. They actually explained to us that the sushi is round because it's like decorations that they use in traditional Japanese homes. So they make the sushi balls like that. So it's so pretty. I don't want to eat it, but I'm really excited to try it all. Okay, so I just ate all the sushi. And if you don't know, I actually don't eat sushi a whole lot. When I do, it's typically like a shrimp tempura or just like a typical like tuna but obviously today i went a little adventurous and tried some other things it was actually very good my favorite one was the toro which is like the fatty tuna it was really good i really can't even describe the flavor but it was so much different than the rest of them it was really good and now i was really excited to try this sea urchin and josh was like skeptical about me trying sea urchin because I'm normally not that adventurous, but I've always seen it on TV and I've always wanted to try it. I like Food Network. Elliot described it to me as eating the ocean. <laughs> and it's pretty much accurate. It literally tastes like you're eating ocean. If you could make ocean seawater? into a bite. No, ocean. No, not seawater, just ocean. <laughs> yeah, there's some Maybe texture animal. to there. Um, <laughs> Interesting. Um, but it also kind of had like a custard type texture to it. It wasn't like, it was pretty smooth, but it also had a little bit of like density to it. It was very interesting, but it wasn't so overwhelming that I couldn't enjoy the rest of my sushi. And it wasn't that I didn't like it, I just wouldn't go out of my way to order it on its own. Okay. So I chose to get a sushi roll as my appetizer for tonight because I didn't do the tastings menu. And I've got the mozaku, uh, mozaku, which is tuna, yellowtail, asparagus, tobiko, red, shiso rice, and a lemongrass ponzu. The lemongrass ponzu is actually like this foamy sauce that's on the dish. And uh, it was recommended that I use that to actually dip the sushi into and not the actual soy sauce. So I'm excited to try it. It looks pretty good. It is um, basically like supposed to be a mosaic of art. And it really actually kind of does look like that, uh, like a combination of different pieces that are all put together to create a mosaic. So I've eaten three pieces of the sushi so far. So that I can try and like grab the profile that is in there. I mean, obviously we know what's in there. What is really great is this lemongrass ponzu. It's very light, has this nice like floral 
kind of aroma to it that adds to the dish. I'm not getting a lot of flavor in there as far as like from the actual fish that is in there. To me, it really just seems like I'm just eating rice. And um, she said to not dip it in the in the soy sauce. I dip it in the soy sauce just to see if I can pick something else up in there. Maybe it tastes salty. That's what soy sauce does. But I mean, overall, it's a good dish. This actually might be something that is good for somebody who is kind of skeptical because I'm just not, there's like, there's no weird fishy flavor in there, which is probably a good thing. You probably don't want that. Uh, I mean, I don't want that. So, I mean, overall, it's still good. I like it. I'm going to eat it all. So I was just talking to Donald and Elliot about this, and they are far more seasoned and well-cultured people than I am. Um, but but uh, a good point that, that Elliot made was that, you know, higher-end sushi does tend to, like, not have... Um, like a fishy taste to it because it's it's better quality and I think that that's probably what we're getting here and the same with the rice as well and it's good. Our third course just arrived and this is the Nakomi Wagyu. This is roasted bone marrow, braised Wagyu short rib, uzu kosho, wasabi sisho, and warishita. So let me just say the plating here has been amazing so far and we're only on the third of seven courses so I just can't even. And Josh didn't even get the tasting menu and his plating on his sushi was really nice too. So um, basically everything here is kind of to be like artisan or Japanese art. So they make the plating beautiful just like the rest of the restaurant. So I am really excited to try this because it smells amazing. So I tried to make sure I got a little bit of the bone marrow and the short rib together. The short rib is super tender and so flavorful. And that bone marrow, I got just enough of it. I could get that buttery flavor in there too. It is just a perfect combination with that short rib that's nice and like beefy and tender. And then with the butteriness of the bone marrow. I really don't know what else to say other than this is amazing. And I actually love having bone marrow as an appetizer. We had it once at another restaurant on Chico. actually Jico over at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge. And bone marrow is actually such a like large appetizer than what you would imagine. So, I mean, this could be like an entree itself probably. There you go, you got it. Wow, that is awesome. You definitely get that nice kind of fatty butteriness in there combined with the short rib is really nice. There's also a nice like saltiness about it as well. <sighs> Thanks for sharing, Taylor. We are now onto our palate cleansing course. This is the Hashiyasume. And Hashiyasume in English translates to <laughs> resting your chopsticks. So this course you rest your chopsticks and take it like a spoonful. So this is a cucumber cube with a uzu gelée and pickled watermelon skin. Very interesting. Definitely like light and citrusy. The pickled watermelon skin was a little bit crunchy in there and had a very interesting taste. I was not expecting that. But definitely cleansed my palate and I am ready for the next course. For my main entree, I got the uh, misoyaki ochazuki, which is a very um, traditional Japanese dish here. It is the sea bass with kari kari sushi shirasu. I can't pronounce everything that's in here. Um, but it was an amazing dish. It was very good. I think what was really surprising and very different about it is that even sometimes a seafood dish can be a little bit salty. Um, and that may just be from them trying to season it back in the kitchen. And this dish overall was sweet. But it wasn't like overpowering. It just had a very sweet, subtle flavor to it. And it was really nice. And I don't know if that's because of like the green tea that is mixed in with it and used to like make uh, like the, basically a Japanese risotto. But I mean, overall, it was fantastic. And I would definitely come back. I would get it again uh, because it was good and it's different. 
We have made it to the fifth course, which is essentially the entree portion. And we have got the Wagyu Tabakurabe, which is Japanese A5 Wagyu strip steak paired with American Wagyu strip steak. And the Tabakurabe actually means comparison. So this dish is kind of so you can compare the American Wagyu to the Japanese Wagyu. It also comes with roasted onion, curried potato, seasonal mushroom, uzu kosho, fresh grated wasabi, and arima sancho pepper reduction. The American Wagyu was very good. It tasted like a really high quality steak, cooked medium rare, and then the Japanese was very good because it was so tender and like buttery basically melted in your mouth and just so you are aware a5 is actually the highest quality of wagyu so this is the good stuff and it was amazing i actually ate all of my american wagyu first so i could savor my japanese for last <laughs> and the vegetables that came with it were actually really good i ate the mushroom surprisingly but it wasn't mushy like a classic mushroom that you picture and then the onion was nice and roasted the potatoes were a little um, strong in flavor, but they were still really good. They actually had some matcha powder mixed with sea salt on the side, and that was really good to put on the steak. So this was overall an amazing fifth course. I could eat a ton more of that Japanese wagyu because it was amazing. Elliot uh, couldn't eat all of his, so he actually let me eat a few pieces of his um, Japanese A5 wagyu. It's not because it wasn't good. <laughs> Just have the disclaimer, it was fantastic. Uh, it was actually truly an amazing piece of steak. Like it, there have been times where I've had steak and people are like, oh, it's gonna kind of like melt in your mouth. This is the first time I've ever had a piece of steak that literally requires you to chew very, very little. And it almost seems to really melt in your mouth. It is, uh, it is rich, it is buttery. I would definitely come back and just order that from the actual menu because you can order that just by itself as your entree. And uh, it was good. It's fantastic. I think this has so far been a really great place. Awesome new addition to Epcot. So, dessert still yet to come. For dessert in the tasting, I have the Japanese water cake. You get some hints of rose in there, and then there's also a kanaku crumb. There's also a like sweet sauce on the bottom. So this is the only thing in this tasting. I don't really like. Everything has been amazing, but this is just a little odd for me. I like more of like the chocolate cake or like chocolate dessert of some kind. So this is just very different than what I'm used to. It is um, kind of like a clear jello with like some sweetness and like a rose flavor. The crumble, you get like a sesame flavor and some rose flavor in there. It kind of tastes like a cookie that has been crumbled up. Um, so the crumble is pretty good, but the clear water cake, whatever, is a little then? odd. So for my dessert, I got, what I get? I don't remember the name. No, that's okay, but you can describe it. It's, so it's a yuzu cheesecake, but it's not like a standard cake, cheesecake where it's dense. She referred to it as a cloud with candy yuzu on top and then a yuzu crumble underneath. I don't know what the sauce is though. It's some sort of berry. So I am a little on edge about this one because it is not a typical cheesecake. I like typical cheesecake, but we'll see. So I think a typical cheesecake has is overloaded with sugar, obviously. It makes it really sweet. This is actually not very sweet by any means. What actually gives you a lot of sweetness is the candied uh, uzu on top, but the cheesecake like clouds are more consistent in flavor with something like a Greek yogurt. Um, which I might, I know it might sound very weird, but it's because it's texture not texture or taste. Taste. So it has a taste that is more consistent with a Greek yogurt. And I think that's because it's not overdone with sugar. And the sweetness that you're getting is from the other elements that are on the dish and not so much in the physical like cheesecake cloud itself, um, which I think makes it very different. Angel is also difficult for me to enjoy. 
Just so everybody knows, uh, I didn't get the tasting today and Taylor's trying to steal my dessert. All right, I'm gonna try the uh, water cake um, because Taylor's not really sure about it. So I'm gonna give it a try because I don't know when the next time is I'm actually gonna try a water cake. The crumble flavoring though for me is not is not there. But the water cake is, is, is interesting because it is almost like, it's very gelatin, but it's very water-like. Yeah. Water cake. That's good. I actually prefer, I think, my dessert, which is the Uzu cheesecake. So the ceremony is performed in the spirit of Ichigo Ichie, which is a concept that means this moment is once in a lifetime. So treasure and cherish it by treating our guests with the highest respect. The ceremony later became a fundamental part of Japanese hospitality, which we call omotenashi. There are more than thousand steps in whole entire ceremony, but we'd like to show you the modified version for this evening. The ceremony begins by pouring two teaspoons of matcha, which is the highest quality of ground green tea. Like this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And we're yeah. going to show appreciation. And break it back in front. Turn clockwise twice. One, two. Okay. <laughs> so don't breathe, enjoy. After we finished dessert, we had a traditional tea ceremony, which was actually pretty cool. And they like have you participate and you drink a green matcha tea, which was very good. Actually, I've never even had matcha tea before, but it was a nice way to end the meal after dessert. And then they actually give you at the very end, a little souvenir to remember your experience here. And it's basically a like sugar rock candy. So we'll remember our dining tonight here other than our video of the dining review. <laughs> so we just finished eating here at... Takumi Te. Takumi Te. <laughs> and it was good. Really surprising. It was very good. Why are you surprised? Uh, because this is the newest signature restaurant here in Epcot. And I, I just feel like when they introduce a signature restaurant into the theme parks, mm -hmm. it can be very iffy on uh, experience. I guess so. Adventurousness of the food. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I mean, of course, of, of price, obviously. But yeah. it was really good. Yes, I thoroughly enjoyed doing the tasting menu. It was amazing. I could have gone without the water cake, but the rest of it, oh, I would definitely come back and get again, no doubt. It was good. I, I really wanted to do the tasting menu, which I didn't do. 
Um, no, but he was just tasting all of our tasting menus. I did, and, <laughs> and, uh, and that's why I tried to get something else that was different so that people could see that, you know, what else they had to offer here. Yeah. Um, and it was good. The sea bass was great. Uh, I would definitely come back and get it again. And I would recommend you come and try the tasting. It was $130 per person. Yeah, so it is a little expensive, but you are getting a lot of food. Yeah. And trying a lot of different things. The total price for our meal tonight was $231, and that was before the uh, tip. Okay. That was included, or wasn't included, but we, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, so it is a more expensive meal, but this is a signature restaurant, and yes. it's more about... It's, it's actually both. It's really the quality of the food and mm -hmm. the experience. Definitely about the experience because when we actually first walked in the door into the hallway there, they actually had us stop. They gave us like the story of what this restaurant is actually about and that it's about, you know, all the, the five different elements of nature mm -hmm. and how there's different rooms here. So I thought that was really interesting. I didn't know anything really about that before we came yeah. here. So it was like really cool to see that I was like thoroughly enjoying the whole process of being seated at our table. And I think the other thing that's really nice about this place too is that when you come in here and you sit down, you are transported away from Epcot. Like Yes, there's no windows in here, which is actually really nice. Yeah. It's very well lit in this room that we are in, the mm -hmm. paper room. And I was actually thinking about it before we left. So we got in here at 545. It's now 850 and we're about to leave. And you can do this whole experience very quick or you can do it very long like we did. We came in when it's light and we're now leaving when it's dark. And we didn't really think about that mm -hmm. because you can't see outside. But they never rushed us. You know, there Not were several there were several parties that came in and mm -hmm. went before we were obviously done. Yeah. Um, and so you can eat very quickly or mm -hmm. Um, you can take your time. And there was actually, there was another a family uh, who came in and they did the tasting. In, and they were in and out pretty quickly. Yeah, maybe an hour. You know, so it's all really just kind of, you know. How you want to do how it. How you want to do it. So it's nice though. This is a great place. It was. An awesome new addition to Epcot, for sure. Yes. So let us know if you are planning on coming to Epcot to try Takumi Te for dinner. Thank you.